Today is the third day of the expedition. We are in the Kazukam State Reserve. We see two different ecosystems in the same area at the same time. One is a lush green forest and the other is a real desert covered with saxoles and other plants. In one plane there are a valley and a desert. The two ecosystems are located side by side. This is a unique phenomenon of nature. As usual, we divided into two groups and had it in different directions. The first group went on to film the plants of the reserve and the second the fauna. Although the sun was about to set, the weather was still hot. The desert wind was not blowing, but its whistling sound could be clearly heard. After crossing the desert, we walked through the 40-50 year old thick triangle forest. The forest is so thick that if you go 20 meters inside it, you will not find a way back. Experts say that such a forest of Turangil trees is not found in other regions of the country. We came to the river bank. The other side of the coast is Turkmenistan. Two villages in Turkmenistan, one smaller and the other larger, can be seen in the distance. Usually the rivers wash their banks and widen. Bukhara is located on the right bank of the Amadaria. For hundreds, thousands of years, the waters of the Amadaria River have formed islands and islets, swamps, Tugai forest as well as ravines. Now Bukhara deer are maybe escaping from the heat of the day, cooling and resting in some way under the trees. Soon at sunset they will come to the water. The first group is waiting for them here. The second group began to film desert plants. We captured saxaul, ferula, sardian tulip, incense and a few other desert plants. We found a piece of rocks in the sand. Its formation is associated with the thousands of years of geographical changes. And the sun reddens and sets, the sands also begin to redden, absorbing and polishing the color of the horizon. Summer in these deserts lasts long. The sun shrines its generous rays for a long time. Before the end of the spring, the grass dries up. It's very hot in summer. During the day, mammals survive in the shade of trees and bushes, while reptiles go under the sand. For example, active life begins at dawn and at sunset.
The locals and shepherds also worked mostly in the cool of the morning and evening. It was not possible to work for the rest of the day. Otherwise, the heat of the desert will lead them to destruction. This is why people have observed more and more that the sands in these deserts turn red. Naturally, the concept of red sand gradually penetrated their minds. This factor is also the reason why the desert is called Kizilkun, a red sand. We've finished filming and returned to the village. We have not yet had time to capture the beloved of the people of Kuzil Rabba. One housewife was separating butter from yogurt in an ancient way in a special container called kuwe. We have not encountered such an incident for a long time. In the past, breeders used this cheap and convenient method extensively. Now, in many places, this method is forgotten. That is why it evokes our sweet memories from childhood. As the day began to get dark, a second group arrived. They said that they were well musket and hid in the bush. As expected, in the evening the deer came out of the groves to drink water and began to come to the banks of the Amdarya. At first one or two, and then a herd of more than 20 deer appeared. The ancient habitat of Bukhara deer covered almost the entire basin of the Amadaria in Sirdaria, the desert between the middle and lower reaches of these rivers. In Sirdaria, the Hangal spread along the Tuga forest of the river valley from the Aral Sea upwards to the Kazil or the region of Kazakhstan. The area included almost the entire territory of the Kazilgur. The year were found in all regions around the Amadaria. Experts say that at the time the number of the year was more than 10 million. Now the number has decreased significantly. That is why it's included in the Red Book of Uzbekistan and in the International Red Book. The Tugai is the main habitat for Bukhara deer. They live and multiply here. As for their migration in early spring, they move from the Tugai forests to the desert and feed on the ephemeral plants here. And they recover themselves. On the other side of the river, there are also very large Tugai massifs. Deer swim easily across the river. We don't know how many deer there are on the other side of the river because it's border area of the neighboring country. We monitor the reproduction of Picara deer, their population, number, and we count them each spring. As a result of this count, 150 and 200 deer were identified. <laughs> The Bukhara deer is now protected in the Badai Tukai, Zarafshan, and Kazilgum nature reserves of the country. Hongols are bred in every year and in natural conditions. The habitat of the Bukhara deer is mainly Tukai complexes. The Hongols feed on desert plants, the leaves of the Trangil tree, shrubs, grasses, tamaris, bushes, and grain crops. It has also been observed that the Hongol sometimes feeds on saxoles in the Amadaria and Sidara basins. In the spring, during the ephemeral vegetation period, deer emerge from Tuga forests to feed on mountain slopes and deserts. 
they come out to graze when it gets dark in the desert. One of the important features of the Bicara deer habitat is the presence of comfortable water basins. Water basins are not the only source of drinking water for deer. The Hongals prefer places where there is an opportunity to swim. Hongals have beautiful bodies and long legs. The nostrils are elongated and at an acute angle to the lower leg. There is an open skin area between the nostrils. The ears are long, the tips is round. The arch above the eyebrow are clearly visible. The hooves of Bicara deer are large and wide. The front hooves are 6-7 cm long and 4.8-5.5 cm wide. When running slowly or lightly, the hongals, like the others' brethren, press the hind hoon to the footprints of the front hooves. The average step length of adult male deer is 71 and 73 cm, while in females it's 61-68 cm. The frightened deer make a short or not very loud sound. Female and young deer scream and make short and beautiful sounds which are reminiscent of howling. Females sometimes roll weakly. Newborn deer babies weigh 10 and 13 kilograms. The weight of newborn deer in the average of the Badaitoka Ibiza was 8 or 10 kilograms. Adult made deer weigh 160 and 200 70 kilograms. The habitats of the Hongols are Tugai forest on the banks of the river and adjacent sandy deserts. The Hongols live as a family group. The number of deer in the group varies throughout the year. Herds consist of 3, 20 and more deer. They are active at night in summer and during the day in winter. They mate in September and October, calving in May and June. Children do not separate from their mothers for up to a year. They grow up in two and three years. Bicara deer are included in the Bourne Convention and cross-border migrant animals. In 2002, an interstate program for conservation and reproduction of the species and an action plan were approved. Extensive work is currently underway on this. When the first group was filming the animals in the reserve, the second group came to the reserve trailer. There are two trailers in the Kazilkam Reserve. Each consists of three rooms. The first is a bedroom with four beds. The inspectors on duty rest here. The second is a study room equipped with a table, chairs, computer, and other work tools. The third is equipped with kitchen furniture, toilet, hand washing machine. Electricity is derived from solar energy. The trailer is a comfortable home with excellent convenience for field conditions. The reserve employs 30 people, including three researchers and one laboratory assistant. There are all the convenience for the work of the staff. The, the reserve has been transferred to the ecological system. A number of decisions have been made to improve the material and technical base of the reserve, to improve the working conditions of the reserve staff. Each time our staff goes on duty for three days, when we learn the living conditions of the workers there, the conditions were not good. There was no electricity, the roofs were not slate. When it rained, water would seep through the roof. After that, two trailers and accommodation module were allocated for the workers. Today we use these trailers. The trailer has all the amenities. Uh, there are air conditions, electric stoves. Inspired by this convenience, each our employees performs their duties five, ten times better than before. As working conditions have improved, employees have become more productive, motivated and more responsible and their work efficiency has increased. We had a hard time because our previous techniques were also outdated. We could not take action against the poachers. Modern techniques and equipment were needed to catch them. 
modern means of communication were also required for reporting and information delivery. Today we are provided with all of these things. Two special new Niva cars were given to us. Many other conveniences are being created. The staff were provided with special uniforms as well. The reserve staff is mainly from the village of Kazil Rabat. Kazil Rabat is a village on the banks of the Amadarba River, 330 kilometers from Bukhara. The village is located in the desert. Not far from the village, there are the remains of an ancient Rabat. It's not known how old this Rabat is. Because archaeological research has not been done here yet, fragments and remnants of various pottery in the Rabat area date back to about 10 and 12 centuries. Our village is called Kazil Rabat, and there is a specific reason for the naming. In the past, caravans used to pass along this river. Everything along the river, there were special places where the caravans rested. There were many bandits attacking the caravans at that time. Therefore, the caravans came to the specially protected places such as Rabats and rested at night here. In our village, the remains of one of the Rabats are preserved. Its walls were made of red clay. That is why it's called Kazil Rabat, which means Red Rabat. Such Rabats were built in every 25 kilometers. There are the remains of another Rabat in the village of Kugurtli, 25 kilometers away from us. The steep walls are almost intact. They are are eroded by water and wind. The walls of the robots here have been completely leveled and become the same as the ground level. But I remember as I saw it as a child, there were standing walls. <laughs> It's known from history that robots were built on caravan roads. The merchants stopped there for a few days, rest and continued on their way. The length of the robot you see is 58 meters. The width was 55 meters. It's surrounded by a wall on all four sides. A caravan of 50, 60 horses and camels is conveniently located in this robot. To the south of the village, there are places called caravan, caravan landing. So these places were an important link of the Great Silk Road. The caravans traveled along the Amadarva River from south to north and vice versa. There is a cemetery on the opposite side of Rabat. It's called the Shrine of Oman Khoja. The sun was soon setting on the horizon. It was getting dark. At that moment, our second group arrived. In addition to the hongal, they were also able to film the boars, rabbits, red wolves, foxes, and eagles. Hearing this made us happy. In our neighborhood, there are 521 people, 102 houses, 133 families. The area of the neighborhood is 294,000 hectares. It consists of three villages. These are Gugurtli, Kizilkum, and Kizilrabot villages. The population is mainly engaged in animal husbandry. We have lots of pastures. Our neighborhood borders with Khorezm region, Karakol district of Bukhara region and Darganata district of Turkmenistan. There are three schools and one medical center in the three villages. There is a kindergarten for 50 children.
first school is far from the district center. Nevertheless, the school has enough facilities for children to get good education. Our school is fully equipped with computer rooms and textbooks. This year, the school building is scheduled for a complete renovation. Thanks to our government and governors, they are all serving the people. They respect the elderly, show respect to the young. They solve the problems of the people. We are providing with necessary things. We live in a Kazakh village. Everyone in the village belongs to Kazakh nation. We follow the traditions of the Kazakhs. The villagers are provided with gas cylinders and drinking water. People live in harmony. Our living conditions are not bad. I try to give young people the advice I know. May our people and our country be peaceful. May our Uzbekistan prosper. <laughs> Thus, our filming in Kizilrabat came to the end. We said goodbye to the very kind and sincere people living in a remote village on the Great Silk Road, on the banks of the Great Amadara River, and headed for the city of Bukhara.